On the left side here on Curse Harl, our blue team goes by the name of Symbiote Gaming and we have KO on Tychus in top lane. We have March playing Tyrael and in bot lane, Matt Timmy on Brightwing, Arphalon on Vala and Soldier playing the Zebo. Too many money pigs, good lord. And on the right hand side in the red trunks, starting in the top Five, lane, it is four, Clairvoyance three, in the top lane. We have Atlanta on the stitches in the mid lane. We have Echo on the Arthas. And in the bot lane, we have Caterpillar on the on the Malfurion. We have Spanker on the Sergeant Hammer. And we have Clown on the Falstad. Uh, let's see. Um, we're going to have a three man push. And it's going to be Clown instead of Arthas, who I thought would be in there. Ooh, Spanker needs yeah, to watch out. There's a zombie wall, but it doesn't really do all that much. Yep, very quick reactions. Both teams going for the free man pushes. They both have their pushes in the form of Nazibo and Sergeant Hammer. And both teams just running the support assassin and pusher combo. I kind of like it. Spanker, looking for his opportunity here. Going to start throwing mines in that bush so he can be a bit safer in there in case someone wants to try and go aggro on him. But all these characters are ranged. They can harass him without running into the mines. But Soldier manages to run into them anyway and takes all three to the face. Um, so what do you think? Should Spanker um, go for the Siege Mode more often? I heard that a lot no, of players don't really not. use Siege Mode. You don't Siege Mode unless you are actively sieging or you're in a fight and way the hell out of the way. And Four Court Jester is here! Yay! Awesome. Hello, Thanks Jester. for tuning in. Indeed. Why aren't you He's probably waiting for a game right now, I think. This is true. The other game still isn't finished, so I guess that's the one he's going for. Spanker, microing back right now. Oh, that, that is quarterfinals already finished. So Spanker looking for his opportunity to get some damage down, but in the meantime, we are seeing Symbio just going to push this lane up as hard as they can. Clown actually just dashing completely over the zombie wall there to get... This is this is a pretty massive push. Oh, oh, oh there's the root on Arphalon. There's the hammerang, and there is the pixie dust, able to save Arphalon there. But that was an amazing route. If they've been able to get their full damage down, then Arphalon would be dead. But great reactions from his team, keeping him alive there. And Arphalon now has gotten the fountain. He's in a pretty safe position now. Yeah, he's in a pretty good spot. Maybe Spanker sh could just siege up behind the wall. Ooh, but oh, there's the problem! Zombie wants a lot zombie of damage, wall. but they are all still alive. But oh god, Spanker a bit risky taking that multi shot straight to the face. Gonna get healed here by Malfurion. But we're putting a lot of concentration in the spot lane, but this is why Arphalon once again going down with the Polymorph, keeping him alive. And this has just been so close here. In this point, this is where most of the action. Zombie Wall again, Spanker in trouble again, taking a lot of damage here, stays alive. And that was just oh, before God. the gate went down. Oh, nice route though, again on Arthalon. Problem is, Spanker. Clown and Spanker. Oh, oh still on Venom. So close, so close there. But Tribute is down in this bottom lane, and Cloud's actually going to be here. He can fly in, try and help contest this. No one is coming down. It's just going to be a bot lane fight. Spanker looking for his chance, but they're not going to get it. Mad Timmy already picking up the first tribute of the game for Symbiote. Yeah, and they're letting this one go. Um, kind of surprising because they didn't go for the, uh, didn't go for the giants either. So kind of a wasted opportunity on their part. But then again, they were getting pushed so hard here that they needed to stay in lane. Otherwise, they would have taken some substantial damage on that fort. So, uh, some good decision making, but still, they need to take that next tribute and possibly uh, go for that first blood soon. If Simbi are going for the chat for the strategy that EG went for of just pushing in every single lane, they're now focusing on the mid lane, but that is leaving Clairvoyance pretty much open in the bot lane with Sergeant Hammer to wreck everything. The tower already down far quicker than anything that uh, Symbiote could have done. Clown taking a bit of harassment though, but they're going to be able to trade Soldier out of there. Arvalon yep. though, coming down, going to get some more harassed down onto Spanker. Spanker! Uh, Spanker, Spanker a little bit... Careful, Spanker. Too, a little bit too, too up front. And there's Clown dashing in. Arvalon taking zombie a lot of damage, but Clown caught out in the zombie wall! Wow, and Spanker also taking a lot of damage. There comes the med kit, And some mines to keep him safe back there. But uh, that was close. They could have gotten Valor in that exchange. Problem is, now it's Spanker against Soldier, and um... Soldier's a bit longer range unless you siege yep. up, then that's a bit risky, especially seeing as the teams have now hit level 8, both teams have the level 7 talents. Next means... tribute is coming in, Ooh. March trying to make a move I here, think... the sword has been thrown, and Soldier caught it a little bit out of position, but throws up a good zombie wall on the oh, right side. On from the back onto Spanker, just destroys him, Spanker didn't have a chance, and we saw Brightwing go down there as well though. For Symbio, but Clairvoyants are all a bit lower than Symbio. They're yeah, back they up. can, they can take him out here. Clown 
Oh, Malfurion actually goes down first. Clown taking a lot of damage. He will go down though. Oh my as god! Well. Will he? No! He survived that KO. That was incredible. Over the kill. Very nice there. And Echo just able to escape as well. Arvalon now going on to Atlanta. Atlanta will go down. Not as lucky as the Nice polymorph. That, that was a clutch play here. I mean, wow. Symbiote really picking them off and getting that second tribute at the same time. Towers are also completely out of ammo, but it's only Matt Timmy pushing mid now. So he will need a little bit more backup uh, to really push this through. But still, that's two tributes for Symbiote Gaming. Not too shabby, and they're almost level 10 as well. So they want to push this. They want to push this hard and really, really force Clairvoyant into that next team fight. Clairvoyant, however, appears to have their own plans. They are already beginning to take their Grave Golem. This is about the time we saw Evil Genius take it in their game. And we're seeing the majority of them all come up here now to, to help take this as quick as possible. Spanker, nice positioning. You can mine over those trees, and that's exactly what he's done. They're going for it. They've pulled it as far back as possible so they can fight in their positioning so Spank can get as much maximum damage. He needs to siege up now for this team fight if he's going to at all. But no, he's going to move in while Mobile. It comes to straight from Valor. A lot of damage. There's the judgment of the Emerald Wind. They are in the circle. Symbiote wow. steals the Golem. And what an amazing steal here. Spanker might be able to get away. Nope. There's Soldier coming in from the back oh, and the Revenant yes. Spirit is popped. He takes him out. That was completely worth it though. Yeah, and now they can take top lane. A curse yeah. is up. The curse is up. The golem is pushing. They can just abandon this. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're going straight for that mid lane. Golem will deal with top lane. Brightwing staying up there. She can teleport down whenever she likes. And they're going to grab this mid port and maybe look for a fight. And there's the angelic flash out of Marsh. Able to back up. Brightwing will be teleporting down very soon. The tribute is now down. And where is Brightwing? What is she doing? There she goes, she's teleporting in now. But incredible play there, the judgment for the initial knockback. Brightwing immediately entering the fray and using Emerald Wind to push everyone out of that circle. Amazing steal by Symbio, who yeah. have now rotated down to the bot lane and they're going to grab this board as well and take out this easy camp. That's three easy. forts in a single curse. Pretty amazing what that uh, initial push did on the, uh, on the bottom and mid lanes. And that's even the gates going down in that curse. Uh, 10 seconds to go. They should get the gates and the towers here. Yep, they're definitely going to do it. With 5 seconds left, they will take down both gates and the towers. And they're going to back up here. They're not going to want to overstay no. their welcome. Going to play it very, uh, very safe. And uh, did uh, Symbio ban first? I think they banned first, didn't they? Uh, Symbio did, they did ban Shen first. They have Tychus. They banned first. Okay, there yep. you go. <laughs> Someone in the chat was asking, did they ban first? Oh, it was Duck Train. Uh, Duck Train was asking if they banned first. Yes, Symbiote oh, did Oh, look first. at that. Symbiote waiting in the bushes, and they're going straight for Echo. But Atlanta also caught out of position, and he's taking a lot yeah, of damage. Yeah, Tychus will take him out. There is the Revenant Spirit also popped. Caterpillar, he needs to watch out. He's so low as well. Oh, Shock and All doesn't really save anything here. And Spanker, can he get away? Nope, there's Serial. And takes him out as well. Clown. Come on, nope, not gonna work, not gonna work. That's a team wipe, and Symbiote just on top of things right now. They will go for their boss at the same time, and yeah, maybe even go for a steal on the bruisers, but nah, nah. We're Timings are still too short. It's out to me that I have been saying uh, Ancestral Spirit instead of Ravenous Spirit. That is, in fact, Rhaegar's ability. My mistake. <laughs> even though that's Ancestral Healing, so many mistakes by me there, but... No mistakes here by Symbio, just playing it fantastically and just holding full control of this game. Amazing play so far. Yeah, can't really go wrong with that. Um, they will have the boss on bot lane now, doing a solid bit of pushing and mind you, the gate is gone. So they need to have Spanker down here just to defend that boss. I think a single hero, maybe two heroes should be sufficient. But at the same time, uh, if they get everyone down here, that leaves the bruises wide open to take for Symbiote. And looks like they're, they're not doing trying that. They're to just go going for the push. They're trying to get oh. some split going. Just to try and nice force idea. something to be sacrificed. And they go the golem's going for the key. Golem's being dropped low. And there we go. We're immediately seeing uh, Clairvoyance abandon this. Because they need to defend this push top lane. This means the Golem's going to get a bit of extra damage, but here's the full engagement. Nice double root there coming down. There's the Emerald Wind, and down goes Arthur straight away. Atlanta also goes down. Nice shock and awe 
Deal uh, drops Nazi Boat very low, but he's able to back up to the back. Arphalon also being dropped low. Spanker gets knocked back by Marsh, though. And Arphalon, oh, able to vault out of the napalm, wow. keeping himself alive. Great play here by Arphalon, but here comes Ka uh, Clown, but he gets polymorphed. He's going to have to back up. Caterpillar trying to keep him alive, but KO just doing so much damage here. And the keep does go down. Symbio on top of their game. Doing oh, and Spanker job. getting caught out of position. There's the boost, and looks like he can get away, but that was a little bit overeager uh, from our siege tank here. But still, yep. I was wondering, like, how the heck could Symbio just sustain so well in these fights? But they're four levels ahead, that's how it works. And there's the hook on Marge, and looks like they will get a single kill here. So, yep, maybe a little bit of comeback possibility. Do the damage with the explosion. That was an interesting maneuver, and I like the use of the napalm as the scout. But now their core's under attack, thanks to this easy cap, going to do a lot of damage. And yeah, people are now making fun of me for my mispronunciation of Ravenous Spirit as Ancestral Spirit. you got to heal people with those ghosts. It's like Ufa. Yeah, Bruises will be taken here for Clairvoyant, but at the same time, Bruises were also taken for Symbiote. And, yeah, they wanted to have a little bit of an edge here, maybe, maybe surprise them for the Bruiser skill, but that's not going to happen. Atlanta waiting in the death bush. Yeah, he's waiting, he's looking for his opportunity, but he's pretty much surrounded here, soldiers yeah. above. He doesn't even realize it. They don't know, soldiers right there. Soldier, be careful! Will we see the root onto him? There's the root! There's the napalm, hammer rag, and soldier sprints out! He's being poisoned! Oh. Can he survive with... Right wing, just in time. Right wing keeps him alive. Not Falstad was not so lucky. In comes the clarity, the uh, clarity soldier doing huge amounts of damage onto Echo. Echo goes down, and this is and not Caterpillar being possible. engaged upon with the judgment as well. He's taken out, and Atlanta only one left alive here on the right side. Spagger tries to come in and help as well, but nope. He just w walks into his doom, and that's going to be the steal here on the boss as well. What a pickup for Symbiote. Yep, and I like the choice of going for the steal for the boss rather than what we see in the EU of them diving the core. There's only 11 seconds on Arthas. They yes. already do have a little bit of damage down, but that was all shield damage. That was healed almost instantly. But they were all super low, especially Soldier. So they are playing it safe, keeping map control, and just going to take down more stuff. They're going to start on this mid so that they can try and get that keep later in the game. They may even go for it now, but Hammer is about to be alive again. Stitch is already alive. So they yeah, but they're still care. four levels ahead, so I think they could try advantage. to do something here. Advantage. And uh, they do have the boss pushing in top lane, so that would have to be dealt with as well. Echo trying to get on top of Arcalon. But no, they will have to back off. Three, four levels they're ahead. They're getting a little bit of poking down. They're doing it. Both teams just poking each other at this point. But now we're seeing Clairvoyant have to react to this golem and Symbio immediately taking advantage of that going straight onto the keep can they kill it before clairvoyants are able to turn around clairvoyants have turned around but they know they can't really engage this golem will go down if they need to fight they need to do it now but they just can't do it they can't land the hook and therefore they can't really get the pick they want echo almost venturing a bit out of position there that is risky yeah i think i think it's gonna be Symbio just just Trying to back off, poke and prod a little bit, but now they're in a perfect position to just grab that next tribute. They don't have a tribute yet, so it's not quite as worthwhile. But still, I mean, just getting them um, for free, that does work. And Soldier's gonna be able to deal with these uh, Siege Giants in bot lane quite handily. Yep, be able to deal with that. They don't even lose the fort. They haven't lost a single fort. It is currently 5 to 0 in favor of Symbio when it comes to important key buildings. And now Symbio, they're just clearing everything they can on the map. Clown is very, very far out of here. I'm not sure what he's doing. But um, Symbio just gaining as much as they can. They're going to take down this Golem as well to get some extra push going. They already have an easy camp in the top lane. So even if this Golem is defended, easy camp will get a little bit of harassment. Man, Timmy actually taking the stun there a bit unnecessarily did take quite a bit of damage. He's going to be you know he's going to teleport straight back for that health. And now, Symbiote going to move forward and attempt to gain control of the enemy Bruiser camp. But it's already, sorry, uh, Siege Giant camp, but it's already been taken. Yeah, and they know that Clairvoyant is here. Uh, they saw the tower being taken. Oh, oh God, nice God, stun. And there's the, ooh, there's the Gorge by Atlanta. Gets Matt Timmy in there. He's taking a lot of damage. Should be taken out here. But nope, he does get away with the, with the heal. And from the back... March just jumping in there, Atlanta taking a lot of damage again, looks like he can be killed this time, 
And Echo caught out of position as well, but I think they want to go for a Clown first. But now Echo's demise is incoming, and that's also the demise here of this keep. Yeah, this is a very scrappy fight compared to the others that we've had so far, but it's still working out in Symbiote's favor. No one down yet. Valor and uh, Tyrael and Brightwing all pretty low, but it's not going to be enough. They've already pushed through the last remaining keep of the game, and that Golem, still on two-thirds health, it's going to push forward. Now Furion being dropped low, is able to shield himself, but he didn't run through the hole. He instead ran away from his base to try and escape the overdrive, but it's not enough. Symbio oh. really... You, March you cutting off their escape, they can't really get into the hall of the... All of the storms, and that's game! That's Symbio taking it and moving on to the semi-finals.